high-profile murder trial begins tomorrow in the small town of Battleford, Saskatchewan. And it's a case that has polarized opinion right across the province. Gerald Stanley is charged with second-degree murder in the death of 22-year-old Colton Bushy. The Indigenous man was shot on Stanley's farm a year and a half ago. Bushy's family and others in his community have raised the issue of racism. And a heavy police presence is expected at the courthouse when jury selection begins. But Stanley's lawyer says the case must be judged on the facts. He insists this is not a referendum on race relations, though even still, there is a racial divide that cannot be denied. David Common went to Battleford to hear from both sides. Should have never happened. It should never, never happen. Oh, okay. It done, mop and done. It took me off. Deep in Saskatchewan's hinterland, tranquility surrounds the grave of Colton Bushy. I love you. A serenity that escaped the 22 year old in life. And Colton's uncle, Alvin Baptiste, is struggling. My nephew has always been a good, a good young fella, but things like this should never happen. Should never happen to anybody that's out there. Ah, musta, kitam, kitam. On the remote Red Pheasant First Nation, Colton's death has laid bare some deep divisions. Why was he killed? Why was he shot? Why would they do something like this to a young man? And Alvin isn't sure he'll get the answers he seeks. To me, like the law, it's two ways. It's the two-way system they're going, you know, how they deal with the aboriginals in the justice system and how they deal with white people in the justice system. How much faith, then, do you have that there will be justice? Do you have reason to have faith? I don't really, not really. 30 minutes down the road, the trial of Colton's accused killer is about to begin. There are many theories about what happened to Colton Bushy a year and a half ago in the summer of 2016, but all that's certain is that Colton and several Indigenous friends drove onto this farm owned by Gerald Stanley. Shots were fired, Colton was killed, and Stanley charged with second degree murder. He's pleaded not guilty. Colton's death, rightly or wrongly, became the latest symbol of the division between the largely white community and their indigenous neighbors. Racial tensions, always on edge, boiled over, with comments like these circulating online. I think this case is probably the most polarized of all the ones I've seen. Doug Cuthand is an Aboriginal journalist and has watched this case from the beginning. I'm really scared about what's going to happen. If Mr. Stanley is found not guilty, there's going to be an uproar in the Indian community. If he's found guilty, there's going to be uh, more fear and more hatred on the other side. So this is, this is a case to watch, but it's also a case that's it's going to have very bad implications. Both sides are tense, and some don't want to talk about the case. But on the farm, Separated by distance, relationships can be hard to build, especially when there are real concerns over safety. Well, the fear is, <laughs> who helps you? I mean, as farms get bigger and, and communities are getting smaller in the rural areas, the distances grow and, and response times are, are significant, very significant. How long have you had them? Farmer Mitch Huber and Kim McIver have worries too, but don't want to be misunderstood. A mile up the road here, uh, a neighbor had his uh, house broke into. They want to protect Basically, their land and their life's work. And to do that, 
They have many tools. Things like guns are, are very common in the country, very common. If it's a coyote, if it's a stray beaver, if it's a multitude of things, maybe getting to be a less of a less of a common common situation, but very very common. Do you have one? Yeah. You're hesitant about talking about that, obviously. <laughs> I, I I don't want to mix up the I don't want to mix the two. Yeah, this is. It is awkward and sensitive because while gains in relationships have been made, they're fragile. Yeah, well, um, First Nations right to the north, to the south, right within their jurisdictions. And right in the middle, yeah. Really good working relationships with everybody. And you know, um, when you say something works, what is it that works for these two communities that don't always have trust for one another? How do you connect them? Uh, there's never too much communication. The more people communicate, the more the more understanding there is for 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 both both sides, huh. and um, that's how relationships develop and and pros, uh, progression is made. That can only happen with trust. <laughs> Building it is the hope at Bannock House, common ground in Regina, where Indigenous and non-Indigenous meet. Um, are the burgers on Bannock? They are. And sometimes break bread together. Okay. Michelle Downs grew up in rural Saskatchewan. Her husband is Métis. The Colton Bushy shooting, do you think it symbolized something? Well, personally for myself, of course it did. Because we should, uh, we should all be getting along together. It's sad, but it's a different world. It's a different world. And, and people, people are afraid. Does this set back hopes for reconciliation? No, I think it, I think it brings, it brings more attention that we need, we need to do something. When you come here, what do you think about? Oh, I come talk to him. I asked him to, uh, that you're in a good place now. Back on Red Pheasant, Alvin has those hopes too. For our people like today, they also too have to come and meet halfways too. You know, we blame everything on the white man, but we gotta stop blaming things that are happening on the white man. We have to try and work together ourselves and healing ourselves and making a better life for our children. Before that comes a search for justice. And a trial that will reverberate across Canada in its symbolism. David Common, CBC News, on the Red Pheasant First Nation in Saskatchewan.